Fast and Furious was one of my favourite movie series growing up. Although when it was first released I wasn't even born, I ended up being introduced to it later down the line and instantly became a fan. The combination of my passion for cars and the film's action packed nature had me hooked. The first film introduced the four lead characters that would be the glue that held the entire franchise together. Dominic Toretto, Brian O'Connor, Lenny Ortiz and Mia Toretto. Or in Vin Diesel's words, I don't have friends. I got family. You don't turn your back on family. No? My family. Every family. It's family. At this point, it's just a corny meme that people take the mick out of, but originally, the chemistry between the characters is what helped build an attachment to them. If you ask me, my personal favourite is Tokyo Drift, even though it's the most far removed from the timeline. But once they were introduced again in Fast 4, things would take a turn for the worse. More stars were brought in, which kinda took the shine away from some of the OG characters. And then, since Paul Walker's tragic passing in 2013, the series has never been the same. I mean, I laughed so hard when I saw the trailer for Fast X had Aquaman and Captain Marvel. It's essentially turned into a gimmick, and having seen what has happened to this franchise, I can't help but feel that Formula 1 might be headed in the same direction. Stefano Domenicali Do a quick google search and you'll probably find a bunch of articles reporting on the latest weird slash quirky take from the CEO of Formula 1. I honestly can't keep up at this point, nor do I want to, but I think the direction he's taking the sport makes for interesting discussion. Reading through comments of people on social media, Stefano isn't the most likeable character, with most saying that he needs to resign. But in order to provide a fair assessment of the Italian's leadership skills, we can't rely on the opinions of Twitter users alone. Domenicali is most famously known as a former Ferrari team principal from 2008 to 2014. But his time with the Scuderia lasted much longer than that, one which dates back to 1991. It was a steady progression of climbing through the ranks until an opportunity at leadership presented itself. In his heart, he'll always be a Ferrari man, and it's one of the reasons why he stepped down as team principal in 2014. At the time, Ferrari were going through a rough patch, as they didn't start the season where they expected. But Stefano showed a lot of selflessness, stating that he gave up his position, quote, for the good of the group of people that I feel very close to. He would go on to work with Audi for a bit, before taking on the role as CEO of Lamborghini. Then, on the 25th of September 2020, it was announced that he would inherit Chase Carey's position as CEO of Formula 1. And I use the word inherit deliberately, because Carey had already laid the foundations for the sport's booming success we're currently seeing. From rebranding the logo to finalising the five-year Concord agreement that started in 2021, the American quietly but effectively revolutionised F1. Initially when the pandemic hit, it was uncertain whether or not we'd even get any racing in 2020. Yet he managed to spearhead the construction of a 17 race calendar, including a return to some classic tracks like Imola, Mugello, the Nürburgring, Istanbul and Portimao. Not to mention the tremendous growth they've brought through the use of social media. Towards the tail end of Eccleston's era, he made it very clear he was against it, mainly due to the fact that he believed it would pose a threat to TV rights. However, as proven by Liberty, leveraging the power of platforms like YouTube, Twitter, Instagram and so on has allowed fans to consume F1 content in a variety of different ways and increase the sport's popularity. Some were fearful that he would Americanize Formula 1 and get rid of the die-hard European fans. But in all honesty, that's something that ironically Domenicali seems to be doing. Proposing new ideas, increasing ticket prices and threatening the removal of heritage tracks like Spa and Monza are just to name a few. Back when he took on leadership towards the end of 2020, I don't think he expected that 2021 would be the all-time season that it ended up being. The year-long title fight drove up viewing figures faster than ever before and provided the biggest opportunity for growth in years. Not just to convert the new audience to lifelong fans, but also attract new sponsors and draw interest from many different countries to host races. Domenicali's position is a tricky one, because the role as CEO of Formula 1 is a lot different compared to being the team principal of a team. Especially right now, when the sport is booming in the way it is, it can be easy to get greedy and lose a sense of its core values. But how much of a say does he really have in these things? Part of me thinks that Domenicali is just a mouthpiece for the higher ups in Liberty Media. He gets all the flack, but really, he could just be a puppet in the whole operation. I also feel like he says these outrageous statements to garner attention and stir up conversation, which he does successfully every damn time. I don't know for certain, but that's just my personal take. 
The reason why I started this video talking about the Fast and Furious franchise as a comparison is because as of late, F1 has been pushing for new ways to spice up the entertainment. As a business, it makes sense, as you'd want to maximise revenue, but at the same time, the way they're going about it risks losing the value in the sport's history and heritage. Max Verstappen's comments about sprint races in my personal view were spot on, and Baku was the perfect example of that. This is a track that traditionally has produced extremely exciting and entertaining races, even without the sprint format. Nevertheless, there were still only 13 overtakes throughout the entire Grand Prix, which suggests that the problem lies in other areas and not the format of the weekend. For example, the tyre compounds were simply too durable. Variations in strategy is what makes Formula 1 interesting, therefore a second round of pit stops would have made the race infinitely better. Secondly, the DRS line being 100 meters forward wasn't very helpful unless you were driving at Red Bull. But most importantly, the teams have found ways of generating downforce with these new cars that the FIA didn't really anticipate. That's why we keep hearing drivers complain about dirty air still being an issue, even though Formula 1 marketed these new regs in a way that made it seem like that would become a thing of the past. But these engineers are incredibly smart, so it was inevitable that they'd eventually find a way to produce more downforce through areas besides the floor primarily. Sprint races could be entertaining if the cars were able to overtake more easily. However, the root of the issue lies more so in factors such as the competitiveness of the grid. And with their plans to introduce more sprint in the upcoming seasons, it feels like a distraction from the bigger problems that need to be addressed. I'm sure they'll keep tweaking the format, to the point where it's the same as or similar to F2, where the top 10 cars in qualifying on Friday are reversed for the sprint. But I don't know, I'm not really down with artificially manufacturing entertainment. I'd rather they just accept that racing in Formula 1 isn't the best. But hey, maybe you disagree, so if you do, be sure to leave a comment as to why. In an interview with the Wall Street Journal last year, the Italian said that his vision for the future of F1 is one of, everywhere we go, we want to create a Super Bowl. Okay, does that mean we're going to start red flagging races randomly and introduce a half-time performance from Rihanna? At this point, that's a possibility I can see happening. Wait for Vegas. Domenicali might have something in store for us. Also, the Super Bowl is a single yearly event, whereas the F1 calendar has 23 races. But I think what he's trying to say is that he wants to create a spectacle out of every event, which seems counterintuitive. Think about it. If every single race were to be this grandiose, amazing, and remarkable event, then surely none of them would be special. There is a saying for that actually. If everything is important, then nothing is. In terms of increasing the entry fee for new teams to enter, is based on nothing but greed. In terms of the season calendar, Domenicali has also talked about having over 30 races a year. Maybe that's hyperbole, I don't know. But I wouldn't be surprised if he was being serious. And most recently, the talk of the town has been the removal of traditional circuits, such as Spa. As he puts it, they're just putting ideas on the table. But why try to fix something that ain't broken? Just because you've had a huge surge in popularity over the past few years doesn't mean you need to radically change the way everything is run. Of course, I'm not an expert and I'm not in his position for a reason. I'm also not saying that there isn't room for improvement or developmental changes, but do so in moderation. In my opinion, all this just seems like a ploy to maintain high viewing numbers and hold on to the newly found fandom. But you can't force people to stay and watch the series because they decide that for themselves. F1 historically is well known for its greedy nature, but the changes that have been proposed recently are something to behold. The worst case scenario I can imagine is you change up things so much so that the hardcore fans you once had become a thing of the past, and the sport ends up losing its soul. If superficiality is promoted, it makes sense why people would want to leave and take their money somewhere else. A similar thing happened to NASCAR, whereby overambition to grow the sport and increase ticket costs led to the diehard fans being priced out and the newer fans losing interest. So to summarize, as an idealist, I would love to see F1 maintain everything that made it special in the first place and not alienate people out of greed. But realistically, they're not gonna do that. They'll do so for the next few years. But this constant pursuit of wanting more may lead to the bubble popping eventually. Let me know what you think about this topic. Do you agree or disagree with my sentiments? What do you think about the idea of a halftime show in the middle of a race? 